Welcome to the video on Defending Part 2. In this video, we will build upon previous concepts that we covered and learned about in the first video about defense, as well as introduce some new examples that are maybe a little more complicated than the previous video. As a refresher, let's recap the various ways that we know how to defend. Okay, so we've been over five basic ways that you can use defense in the game of chess. When a piece is attacked, you can move away. You can just move it, right? You can capture the piece that is attacking you. You can protect the piece that is being attacked. You can block or interpose against the attacking piece. And you can also counterattack, right? Uh, attack another one of your opponent's pieces. And in the course of a game, you're going to have multiple situations where there are many choices of defense. And there may be situations where more than one type of defense is adequate. There may not be only one right, correct choice for defense. So let's take a look at a few examples to kind of refresh our memory on uh, defensive basics. And the goal is for each position, trying to first identify all the possible ways of defense. And secondly, if there is a best way of defense, to try to deduce what that is. All right, so let's take a look at this first position. Very, very simple. Step one is identify the piece that is being attacked. So from white's perspective, that clearly is the knight on a5 because the queen on d5 is attacking it. So what are our options? Well, you should go one by one in your head. You'll see that if you want or choose to move the piece that's being attacked, there is only one square that makes sense. If the knight goes either to b7 or c6, it will be captured and taken immediately by the queen. So the only logical correct square for the knight to go to, if you choose to move it, is the c4 square, right? Because now this pawn on b3 is supporting it as a form of protection, so that if the queen were to take the knight on c4, white would simply recapture with the pawn, and this, of course, would be a very positive and beneficial exchange for white. All right, but some of you might have seen another option besides moving the piece. We can't take the queen with anything in this situation. However, we can protect the knight with pawn to b4, which is also a reasonable option, okay? Because obviously the same thing would happen if the black queen would take the knight, white simply recaptures, and all is good. All right, so let's move on to the next example. Same thing here. Identify the threat, what piece or pieces are being attacked, and then try to figure out what the best option may be. Okay, so from white's perspective again, it's clear that two of white's pieces are being attacked the bishop on c4, and the knight on e2, via black's pawn on d5, and rook on h2. All right, so when you kind of had this double attack, it's very important that you try to resolve both attacks at the same time so that you don't lose material, okay? So if you go through all the options, hopefully you evaluated that the best move or moves for white in this position is one which you move the bishop on this diagonal somewhere. All right, so any of these three squares highlighted in yellow. All right, because if you move off the diagonal, then the knight's going to fall and black gets the knight for free. Okay, similarly, in this situation, it does not make sense to support the bishop on c4 because we have learned what a positive and advantageous exchange is. And a bishop is worth more than a pawn, not to mention you will lose the knight as well in the process. And so this, of course, would not be a good outcome. And finally, capturing the piece that is attacking you does not make any sense either. Again, for the reason that a bishop is worth two points more than a pawn, black simply takes back, and he is winning. 
So a move like bishop to d3 is perfectly fine because, of course, not only are you getting out of the attack from Black's Pawn, but you are still maintaining the connection protecting this knight on e2 so that if Black were to take now, the simple recapture saves everything and you win an exchange in the process. All right, what about in this position? It's white to play once again. Here we see that there are a number of options for what could be possibly a call to correct move. So in this position, the bishop on e4 is the one that is under attack via black's bishop on h7. So what do you think you would do here? Well, if you move the piece anywhere, uh, it doesn't really make that much sense, right? Because if you move the piece along this diagonal somewhere, whether it's g2 or c6, doesn't really matter because you're leaving your rook on b1 vulnerable, which would get snapped up immediately by the bishop on h7. So this would not be a good idea. Of course, a simple solution is that in this case, you can capture the bishop on h7, making it an even trade, right? A trade, of course, being an exchange where there is equal value being received by both you and your opponent, okay? So taking on h7 would make perfect sense. Another option that you guys might have come up with is protecting the piece that is being attacked. One way to do this is rook to b4. So now after bishop takes bishop, the rook can recapture, once again resulting in even trade. The last way to protect the bishop on e4 is actually not a good one. So if you thought about the move king to d3, supporting the bishop, this could make sense if black were forced to trade off the bishops. However, black has much better than that. In this position, black can play rook to d7 check. And then unfortunately, when wherever the king moves, this bishop on e4 still falls. Black wins a piece, and white loses a piece for nothing. Okay, so here we have a more tricky position, where there is only one correct move for white in this case. See if you can find it. So white's bishop on g6 is the piece that is under attack. However, you may notice some issues with where that piece can move. To begin with, it's clear that the bishop cannot move to any of these squares highlighted in yellow because it will simply be taken. Likewise, if the bishop were to move and retreat to h5, this would not work out due to bishop to d1 check, and wherever the king moves, bishop takes bishop, and white has lost a piece for nothing. And finally, the most obvious move actually loses for white. So you may think, hey, even trade, right? Why don't I just take this bishop on c2? Well, the problem is, after black recaptures, black is getting a new queen next move, and there is nothing white can do about it. So this is hugely problematic. This is not an even trade. If you look one move further, you'll realize that black is actually getting a full queen for nothing in exchange. So what is the correct move in this position? The answer is bishop to e4. Definitely a little tricky. So after bishop to e4, it is now supported by this king on f3, so that after bishop takes bishop, the king can take back. Bishop to e4 is the correct move. Remember that as far as defensive principles and options are concerned, a lot of them overlap between standard moves and defending against check too, right? So take this example, for instance. It's white to play, of course, because white is currently in check. So what is the best move here for white? Many of you maybe thought initially that bishop takes rook looks the most obvious, right? 
After all, a rook is worth more than a bishop. However, as you guys get better and better, you have to look more than one step ahead. That is what chess is all about. If you did do this, you will realize that bishop takes rook is actually a losing move because black simply recaptures with his rook. And what is this? This is no longer a check, but this is in fact checkmate. Because now nothing can block the check and the king cannot move to either of these squares due to the combination of the rook and bishop raking across the g file and the diagonal. So instead, what should white play? The correct answer is a block or a, an interposition by the bishop via g5. So bishop to g5 blocks this check. It is supported and protected by this pawn f4. And now, if black were to take on g5, white would simply recapture. What about here? White to play? White is currently in check via this bishop on b2. And once again, there is only one correct move here for white. Again, despite all the options that you may have in this situation, only one is the best option here. The correct answer is pawn to c3, blocking this check. Very, very important. Okay? If the king moves anywhere, okay, you may have noticed that you will lose your queen next move. Like one of the earlier examples, too, a tempting option might be bishop takes bishop. However, if you do this, the pawn takes, and what happens? Well, the same thing we saw in the previous example. There is no way for white to stop black from getting a new queen next move, and that, of course, would be a very good thing for black. Okay, so the only option that looks a little strange is actually blocking this check with the pawn, because although you lose a bishop in this case, you are not losing a queen, and of course the queen is worth more than the bishop. All right, so the last and actually next form of defense that we are going to introduce in this video is the concept of x-ray protection or x-ray defense. All this means is that you are kind of indirectly protecting one of your pieces by having a line connect between your piece through the opponent's piece that is attacking it and then to the other side. All right, so check out these examples of how this works. Look at the following position with white to move. All right. The first thing, of course, is to identify what piece is under attack and whether or not it needs to be saved. And then secondly, what is the best possible move to defend it? So hopefully you noticed that white's knight on b7 is the piece under attack via black's bishop on d5. All right. So what do you think you should do about this attack? If you look at the knight on, on b7, it looks a little trapped, okay? If you try to move it anywhere, hopefully you see that regardless of where it goes, it will be taken the following move in the form of an advantageous exchange, if not completely for free. So how do you save the knight on b7? The answer is bishop to f3. And this is the x-ray defense. Okay, because this bishop, via the same diagonal as the attacker, is indirectly defending this knight on b7, hence the word x-ray. Okay, because now, if black were to take on b7, you could simply recapture. And, of course, if black were to take this way, this is simply an even trade, but what you've done is you have removed the attacking bishop from this d5 square, so now nothing is attacking this knight on b7 anymore. Very simply, this is an example of the x-ray defense. Alright, so let's try another example here. 
take a look at this position. What do you think you would do for white? The knight is attacked on h4. Again, if we go through the checklist, we can't take the piece that is attacking, right? We can't trade anything off. We can't block or interpose. We don't want to move the piece anywhere because, again, we have nowhere safe to go. So here, once again, we see an x-ray defense via this protection of the bishop on e1. Because now, if black were to take on h4, white can simply recapture. All right. Take a look at another one. So this one could be a, a little trickier. Okay. Again, white to play. Of course, this queen is the one that is vulnerable via black's queen on c6. But the very simple trade on c6 actually is the worst move in the position. Because after queen takes c6, black simply recaptures and oops, what happened? This, ladies and gentlemen, is actually checkmate. There is no defense, nowhere for white's king to go, and nothing to block. So white actually loses here. Instead, white has the opportunity to at least prolong the game a little longer with the x-ray defense of pawn to f5. Now you see that this rook is protecting the queen on e4 so that when black captures on e4, white can take back and it's an exchange of queens. All right, so with that, uh, I will conclude this first part of the more advanced defense video and make sure to practice the examples as well as check out part two. We will take defending one step further. Thank you for watching.